Hi there, this is Nicole and welcome to my channel. If you are new, if you are part of the Save the Crafty YouTuber hop and welcome back to anybody that subscribes to me already and follows me here on YouTube. I am very excited to be a part of this hop and I just wanted to take a couple seconds to kind of make a longer intro so that you guys can kind of see all the different sponsors included in the video. I will talk more about that here in a second, but for now, let's go ahead and get started on my process. For my layout today, I am following a sketch from Scrapbook Generation, their sketchbook, The Whole Picture, Volume 2. Basically, it is a sketchbook that uses full-size 4x6 photos, but the way that I am able to include more photos is to basically make my own collages on a 4x6 print. So I was able to get a ton of pictures in here. I also have some strips of paper cut to 3 by 12 inches. This is Bristol Smooth cardstock. Typically you see a lot of people using it for watercolor, especially for the Zig Clean Color Real Brush markers. And then here I've got a couple really old stamp sets. Below in the description box I will link to some that are still available. And then the sort of star of the layout today, when I found out that my prize for the video was going to be two full-size ink pads from Katherine Pooler, I was pretty excited. I like to include stamping and typical card making supplies on my layouts, but I knew that the inks were relatively new to me and so I had not played with them. So I went online and I couldn't, basically I couldn't pull the trigger on which colors I wanted to order. I thought about getting two or three different colors of full-size ink pads to kind of play with. And then I saw that she had these mini sets. And they're not mini cubes, kind of like the Distress or some of the other manufacturers. These are more of a small rectangle. But as soon as I opened them, I was so excited. The ink pad itself is kind of like the older My Favorite Things ones or the color box ones. Like they're that juicy, kind of soft foam. It almost... This is going to sound terrible. It almost reminds me of um, if you use like a beauty blender or a beauty sponge to put your makeup on. That kind of like soft give. And to me, those are kind of like my favorite type of ink pads. Like I was kind of bummed when some of the manufacturers switched over to felt ink pads, which those work really good too. I think it's just a kind of a preference as far as how you use supplies. But either way, I went with this um, set that was more bright, kind of pastel -y type colors. And then when I pulled them out, I just could not come up with like which ones I wanted to use. So I decided to use them all. And I'm a big fan of rainbow. So knowing that I was going to have a, obviously lots of colors going on, I kind of worked backwards and figured out my photos and what I wanted to document based off of the ink pads. And so I went ahead and printed photos from my kids fundraiser that they do um, in October of every year. Basically it's like a fun run and you can go fill up spray bottles with um, like non-toxic paint and spray the kids down and they end up looking like a big, big colorful mess at the end of the day. So basically I took this, uh, it's a stamp set from My Favorite Things. It is older. I believe it's called Jumbo Abstract Art. Um, if they still have it, I will put a link to it. If not, I will go through and find some newer stamp sets that are for sure still available and put them in the description box. The other one, the rubber stamp set, I know for sure you cannot find that anymore. It's probably over 10 years old. I bought it from Stamping Bella. A long 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 time ago but it is one of my diehard favorites it's basically just like coffee spill splattery type looking things but to me it's just a it's a good basic set and then this other one is from mama elephant it's got feathers and like an ink bottle but I was using it for the little teeny tiny like ink splotches and basically what I did was I just took all of those stamps kind of stamped them randomly but I did keep them in rainbow order I did go ahead and throw in a yellow mini ink cube from my favorite things I believe that one is lemon drop mostly just because the pastel colors that I was using I felt like I needed a yellow and the eight that you get you get gorgeous colors but I just personally I needed a yellow in my rainbow like I'm kind of a traditionalist when it comes to my rainbows so basically I just kind of had fun it took me a while and so I edited out a lot of it 
but I did all four of those panels that I had cut down from the Bristol Smooth cardstock. Then I just took some Memento black ink, smushed it onto a acrylic block, added a little bit of water, and then just kind of flicked it over. Basically, I'm just kind of mimicking the theme of my photos. If I'm going to incorporate stamping and stuff like that, I want, I don't want it to just look like stamps that I threw on a page. I want it to be supportive of my theme or supportive of my photos or, you know, maybe I don't have pattern paper that sort of supports my photos or supports my theme so I can make my own. Um, if you are new to my channel, this is probably a little bit different than my normal thing. Typically, I am a big, big lover of pattern paper. So typically, I will do heavy pattern paper, maybe medium level of embellishment, but I do like fitting as many photos on a layout as possible. I don't do very many single photo layouts. Typically, if I do, it's something like the photo that you get at the mall when you take your kids to go see Santa or, you know, the one photo that you get when you go to, like, a... Uh, a Christmas party or something like that. I don't typically do one photo layouts. For me, it's kind of about as much as I can possibly get. And then I do tend to focus on photos, journaling, title, and then everything else is kind of secondary. But for me, this layout was more just about having fun with the process, playing with new product, playing with old product, kind of going a little bit out of my normal and I actually really liked the end result. Typically if I do something like this where I have a big heavy photo block, I tend to like to have a pattern paper border between my photos and the background and that was my plan. But for whatever reason when I put my photos down, I really liked the way that the white border met up with my white papers and so I chose to leave it like that. I think it's fun to kind of play around and maybe do something that's not in your normal style or in your normal method to things. Um, I also tried something new where when I was printing out my photos, instead of covering the open area with printed journaling on cardstock, I went ahead and typed up my journaling on the actual photo and printed it out on my photo printer. And I really liked that. So that was kind of a fun little quick trick to kind of add to this. And then I just went and got some black doodle bug alphabets and did my title. And then from there, I knew I wanted to kind of keep it simple. I wanted the colorful stamping to stand out. So I didn't want to take anything away from that. I also didn't want to sort of pick out a specific color to focus on. So for me, it's kind of black and white. So I just pulled out things that I kind of keep on the side of my desk where I've got a bunch of different like phrase stickers, labels, stuff like that went through and kind of just focused on what I could find that was black and white. And it was mostly just basic shapes, just things like arrows, labels, phrase stickers, that, you know, that kind of thing. Um, I typically, like I said, I started with a sketch and typically I will start with a sketch, but then somewhere around the halfway point, I tend to go off on my own. This one, I kind of went off on my own pretty early. I mostly followed the sketch as far as where the photos were and did my own thing from there. So I hope you guys enjoyed the process. Please again check the link in the description box below. There is tons of information. There is a link to the next video in the hop. Uh, you have until the 5th of April to comment and be eligible for the prize. My video is being hosted from Catherine Pooler Inks, which is the inks that I used. Um, so the winner on my video will get two full-size ink pads. And the winners will be announced on April 10th on Justine's channel. Her link will be below as well. And I just want to say again, thank you for spending a little bit of time with me today. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the hop. Bye.